So you've brought in a dude, and uh, just as an example of what you're going to teach us about here, but uh, it's a dude riding another. Well, he's not, that guy's not a dude. He's, the he's dragon, dragon is dragon. probably a dude. I, it's a dude on a dragon. Who's also a dude. Who's got three dudes because yeah. of the heads. So it's yep. Archaeon. So you've been working on Archaeon. And he's you, not just any dude. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But you are going to show us how to paint um, lava bases kind of like the way you did the lava on that thing. Yeah, yeah. So I, I painted this Archaeon model. And in front of him, the, the ground is splitting open and it's filled with lava. So... We were talking about getting together and shooting some more videos. I thought, why don't I show people how I did this lava? I'm just doing it on like a regular 25 millimeter base. Sure. But it's definitely something you could use as a feature, you know, in part of your base like I did on Archeon mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. But yeah, it's pretty quick and easy, although it does include some wet blending. And I know, I know how <laughs> afraid you must be. <laughs> Lose the fear. It's friggin' easy, bruh. <laughs> So like I said, we we're working on some lava bases and this is how we do it. Starting out with a pure yellow base. I definitely painted a few layers of white on that to make a more vibrant yellow. It's much, e much easier to go from a light color, light color on top of a light color instead of a light color on top of a dark color. And for the base coat of lava, we have Kato Red Highlight and Cygnus Yellow. And what I'm gonna do is wet blend these. I know it's scary, but I want you to hold my hand and lose the fear, my brother. Don't be afraid of wet blending. It's easy, especially doing it this way. Like this is a good way to, to practice because you can't really mess it up. But you see, I just kind of got two pools of wet paint going on. As the name of the technique would imply, you're just blending together while they're wet. Not going for a particularly smooth result, which is why this is good to practice with. Just trying to create some uh, layers of chaos. So there you go, you see? The white blending is done, nothing too crazy. Just want to make sure that that's dry before the next step. But uh, while this is drying, our next step is going to be adding some Mod Podge, Dimensional Magic. It's pretty sweet stuff. You can find it at most hobby stores, crafty stores. So we got some Mod Podge. Excuse the uh, plastic bag palette here. I always forget something. But honestly, like the Mod Podge gets weird on your wet palette. It's gonna mess your palette up. It's probably best to do this on a piece of garbage, but for the video, I wanted to avoid that. So we're just mixing in some a uh, little bit of yellow and red ink together to make an orange with the Mod Podge. You can see it's semi-transparent. We're just going to glaze it on top. And you can see Archeon hanging out in the back there. He's got his lava in place. So there's layer one. And with like many things in miniature painting, this is about building up gradual translucent layers. So let this fully dry before you uh, go and add some more paint to it. The whole idea is to slowly build up layers of tint over your, your uh, chintzy wet blending on the bottom. So we're gonna let this dry and then we'll be back. Alrighty, so we're back. Our first layer of Mod Podge mixed with ink is all dry. And what we're gonna do is add another layer. Super exciting. But I wanted to catch this on camera because I'm making this layer a little bit brighter, adding a little more yellow ink to it, a little more of that Mod Podge. I wouldn't recommend using Mod Podge as some clear breakaway resin filler, like you're doing some cutaway on half of your plinth and there's fish underwater. It will look bad. Mod Podge is good for making small puddles and things like this. You're gonna rip the tape off and it's it's taken half the gum from the tape with it and you got some blurry water. I've done this, I know. So just in case you were thinking this is a replacement for clear resin, not in all situations. Not in the big situations where you want it to be easy. But anyway, see I'm adding the uh, more yellowed out layer of Mod Podge and ink. I'm gonna go get a little liberal with this one. A 
really douse it on there. So now you can see that wet blend is, is pretty rough in the beginning, but it's starting to get smooth, still retaining some sharp edges. It looks like lava to me. So there it is. So I'll uh, layer it on there to perfection, and then we'll come back again, start adding some bubbles to it. So we're back, and this time we're going to be going backwards and color a little bit. Like the last step, I layered on the light yellow. This time around, I'm going to add a little more red, red to it to make it orange again. Just like this. Pull a little off to the side. And this, I'm going to be a little more uh, choosy about where I put it. I'm not just going to, not just going to slick it over the entire base. I'm going to dab it into some specific spots, like so. Kind of looks like planet Earth, but burning. And once that's done and dry, we can come back for our final layer, which will be adding some bubbles on top. All right, we are back for the final step. So there is how it looks after everything is all dried out, still retaining some of that gloss, looking like lava. For the next step, I just added some Mod Podge with the uh, pure yellow ink, as we see here. And I'm just going to add some some dots like that to the to the surface of it. You can kind of see Archeon here. Let's see if I can get him into the shot. Yeah, you can see all those dots are going to turn out. And I'll show you how I did it now. Pretty simple. Using a garbage brush again. But yeah, just laying some dots as they dry they'll go down a little bit and you're, you know, do this to taste, but you're probably going to want to go back and add some more layers to kind of build up. But yeah, there's no particular rhyme or reason to the placement. I just try to make bubbles. They kind of come up in clusters, so I'll pack them a little more tightly in some areas, a little more spaced out in some areas. Get a good shot of that on the cool. Kaboom. So I hope you enjoyed the video that we made uh, making uh, lava bases. And thanks to Adam and company, everybody at Tabletop Minions. Thanks for commenting, subscribing, watching. It's all been really cool. And I hope that you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.